Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, will she ever move in? Well, this is a, a good question, a good topic that I wanted to go through because this particular guy happens to be in a long-distance relationship. This woman he's dating is about three hours away. And she about once a month, she says, when are we going to move in together? But the city he lives in, he loves where he lives. Plus, he's got young kids with his ex-wife and he has joint custody. So he can't move away. Plus, he loves his job. He loves the people he works for. And he has zero interest in moving. And in these particular situations, unless the guy loves the area, like if he's dating somebody that's long distance. Because I mean at the end of the day, if you're dating somebody long distance, somebody, if you're going to stay together long term, eventually is going to have to move. And the only reason a guy should move is if there's better opportunity, it's a better area, and he really wants to live in the city where the woman happens to be. Because when a woman is head over heels in love with a guy, she'll be submissive. She'll give up her career. She'll even give up her kids, her family, her religion, her country, her money. I mean that's why you see women that fall in love with guys that are they're defending that they're attorneys. And they help break them out of prison and they escape to Mexico and end up ruining their fucking lives. You think, that defies all logic. These women go to an Ivy League school, they're attractive and they basically fall in love with a guy who in essence is a criminal. But the thing is, the guy knows how to push her buttons. I, one of my aunts, she worked in a, in a prison for 15 years. And there are many instances with some of the female guards hooked up with some of the male inmates. Just because some of these guys, they had the gift of the silver tongue and knew how to manipulate women and get what they want. That's why you see crazy – you're like, what? She gave up that whole life to, to break the guy out of jail and they run off to the Caribbean or Mexico or Central America? It's like, it doesn't make – it defies logic. But when a woman is crazy, head over heels in love with a guy, it, it has nothing to do with logic. It has everything to do with the emotions that they're feeling and the emotions override all of the – you know, it's just like sales. People buy a car or any kind of product or service based upon emotion and we use logic and reason to justify our purchase. And so therefore, like when you talk about somebody you know, giving up her career and breaking a guy out of prison, it was all because she's totally gonzo, head over heels, emotionally in love and in her mind logically, well, I'm in love with this guy. He's the guy we're meant to be and we can live a great life and I can have everything I ever wanted. And she talks herself into it. She gives herself – she finds reasons why that kind of behavior is OK. And so in this particular case with this guy is that he really loves her. He cares about her and she – once a month, she brings up, when are we going to move in together? And then he, they talk about it and she's got a daughter who in, a, in about a year and a half is going to graduate high school. She graduate actually, she graduates next year, 2016. And so sometimes she's like, yeah, I'll move there after my daughter graduates high school next year. And then there's other times she's like, well, I'm going to stay here and wait till my daughter graduates college, which is basically five years from now. And so it's obviously frustrating to this guy because he's like, you just said high school a few weeks ago. Now you're saying it's not until she graduates college. And so in his email, there's some clues of some things that he, that he needs to tweak in his game and his interactions with her that I'm going to point out. And then, you know, and we'll, I'll discuss how he can modify his approach to give himself the best possible chance for her throwing in the towel, moving to where he lives so he doesn't have to drive three hours all the time. So I got a quote that I wrote in this topic and we'll go through his email. And the quote says, when it comes to long distance relationships, especially ones where people live several hours apart or live in completely different cities or countries, if the relationship is going to last long term, then someone is going to have to move. If you find yourself starting a new relationship with someone who is long distance and you have no intention of moving or the ability to move if you share joint custody of young children with an ex, then unless the other person is willing or able to move at some point in the future, it's simply not a good idea to become involved with them romantically. When it comes to long distance relationships, it's essential to remain objective and not become too emotionally involved or involved at all if there's no chance of you or the other person moving to each other's city. 
So he says, Mr. Wayne, I hope this finds you well, sir. Thank you for your work. It is indeed life-changing and life-saving to all who follow you. Thank you for the compliment. Your approach with life and women has absolutely changed me and my relationship for the better. If I may give you a quick example of a text my girlfriend sent me the other day, it speaks volumes of wh- about what you teach. She says to him, how come I love you so much? Maybe because of Coach Corey Wayne? And she says, you've been putting the Bob Mojo on me this week. Bob is obviously not his real name. And he says, you know why you do. And she says, I sure do miss you. I wish it was Friday. And he says, I know you do, gorgeous. I'll be there real soon. Pretty smooth. This is just a small example of how being a fucking man can change things. I have generally been good at picking up girls. I have never chased. And I guess you could say I was a natural. However, my problem was always keeping the girls. This is apparent as I am divorced. How long you stay in a relationship really has no impact on the quality of that relationship because there's lots of people that stay in it for the kids or for other reasons or because they're too afraid but the quality of the relationship sucks. The idea is for you to be able to attract the kind of people that you want to have a relationship with and then enjoy that relationship as long as there's chemistry and love and you're continually growing together because you either grow together or you're going to grow apart. Most people, when they grow apart or they never really grew together in the first place, they just stay in it because they're afraid they won't find anybody better or that the next person won't be as good as the one that they're with. He says, I know what I did wrong in the past and I found myself doing the same beta male behaviors with my current woman of two years. I had to get back on my game and I found your videos. I have read your book, How to Be a 3% Man, and I do not know how many times. For the rest of my life, I will reference it and continue to follow your videos. Well, that's a great way to approach it because it's fundamentals. Anything in life, you're going to have fundamentals. And when I work with salespeople who their business has gotten off track or their sales have dropped, I always like, what are the fundamentals? What, What are the specific tasks that you must get done in your work week, if it's Monday through Friday, that cause your sales to roll in? And break those things down because what happens most of the time is they get caught up in other bullshit that really is not what brings the income in the door. They don't see it because it happens slowly over time. Same thing with business owners. When I work with people who have a great business and things, the sales are down and things have gone sideways. It's always the same thing. They get away from the fundamentals that make their business grow. It's like for me, what makes my business grow is doing videos and articles. It's basically coaching people virtually. That's what continues to grow my business, drives book sales, drives coaching revenue, drives donation revenue, all of those. And that's why I consistently do it week in and week out. You don't see me like posting five videos in one week and then I don't do shit for two weeks. You have to do everything, every business, everything you do and same thing with relationships. You have to make consistent effort. It's doing the little things day in and day out even when you don't feel like it. He says, our relationship has been good for the most part since we have been dating. I acted a little beta, found you, and changed that shit. We are exclusive and plan on keeping it that way. Since digging into your material about five months ago, things have been great. He puts in big bold letters. I am absolutely crazy about this woman. She is fucking gorgeous, a serious alpha female. The sex is fucking mind-blowing. She's just my type and she definitely keeps me on my toes. Well, a good woman, an alpha female, will do that. But the only way you're going to keep an alpha female head over heels in love is if you do the little things consistently, week in and week out, month after month, year after year. I am 44 and so is she. We live three hours apart and we share, and we share with the visiting of each other. She comes here and I go there equally. Well, that's good. She does 75 to 80% of the initiating as far as the calls, texting, etc. Well, I would say that's part of your problem right there. You're still doing too much of the calling, texting, and pursuing. On a scale of 1 to 10, you may be an 8 or a 9 in her eyes. But being a 10 is – that's where – you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, in other words, you're a 10 in her eyes. That's where she's like will give up everything. That's when she's really going to want to be together and nest. 
And if you're having problems getting her to that point, especially after two years of being together, but you got to keep in mind you were doing a lot of beta male behavior consistently for quite a while. So that obviously is going to have some kind of impact on her and how she feels about you. But I'd say after two years, if you're still doing 25% of the pursuing, it's way too much, man. It's just not necessary. Women need time away from you to wonder about you, to think about you. That's the only way that their feelings will grow for you. And if you're still doing 25% of the pursuing, you're making it too easy on her. And if she ever happens to say, how come you never call me or text me anymore? Then maybe once a week you send her a text or a message or an email out of the blue just saying, hey, hope you're having a great day. I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. I love you. And that's it. Just something simple like that. But you need to, you definitely need to back off to the point where she's doing 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing because that will push her. Because if you're, if you're, if she's doing 75 to 80 percent of it, then I would say consistently her attraction level for you is about a seven or an eight. So in other words, she'll feel love, but it's she's not consistently in love with you, and that's part of the problem. That's why she's vacillating. That's why sometimes she says she'll move when her daughter graduates high school and then other times she says it won't be until she graduates college he says i want her to move here i talked to her about it a while back and she said that she wanted to let her daughter finish school there which is fine by me i respect that as i'm a father and kids come first her daughter will graduate high school in 2016 keep in mind she is always asking when we are going to live together as soon as you move move in baby when are you going to move in okay well She's either to move in or she's not. I told her that I would not move there because of my daughter. My kid is 11. Her mother and I have 50-50 custody and I am not willing to give that up to move. I wouldn't either, dude. Kids are fucking amazing, especially you know, kids are around 11, 12. That's when they're really expressing their personality and it's like, oh, that's, those are like some of the best years that you're going to have with your daughter. I wouldn't fucking trade that for anything. He says, also, I have a fat pension that I am not willing to give up. Plus, I really like my job and the people I work for. Yeah, you definitely should not move. You got too much to lose. You know, I, I've done plenty of emails where guys that gave up a job that they loved and moved away from their families when they didn't really want to do it because they thought it's what would make the woman happy. And they get there, and then the girl breaks up with them, and now they don't have the girl, and they're in a city they don't want to live in, and their fucking job sucks, or it's not as good as what they gave up. That would be a bad situation. My girlfriend will have the ability to move here when her daughter gets out of school. She says she may not want to move here though until her kid graduates college as she plans on attending school where she lives locally. Well, by then her daughter is going to be an adult and she really should be living in a dorm and having the college experience, living away from home. Her daughter could stay with her dad if she wanted to or she could attend a college here. And so... What that tells me is that when she says high school, that tells me that her feelings are really, you know, bumping into the nine, ten range. And so therefore she's thinking, I'm gonna move in with you as quick as possible. But when her attraction level drops a little bit, that's when she throws out the college thing, which is putting it off further into the future. Because remember, women, it's like what what they feel for you today is is different than what they felt a week ago, and and it's different from what it'll be in a month. She is not committed to any schools as of yet and also as, as far as my girlfriend's career field, she could easily land a job here. My point is that it's simply a hell of a lot easier for her to move here logistically speaking. The bottom line is that I am not going to quit my job or leave my daughter three hours away. And that's the way it is. I wouldn't do that either. You've got too much to lose. You'd be absolutely out of your fucking mind to give up your daughter and – give up the job that you love and that would be just crazy. I have made this very clear since the beginning so I am confused. She wants to live with me and she knows where I stand yet she continues to ask me when we are going to live together. We're going to live – and next time she says that we're going to live together as soon as you get your fucking cute little ass over here and move in with me. So when are you going to move? And she's like eh, – eh. And she continues to make excuses on why she won't move here when her kid gets finished with high school. Do you have any insight on this? Well, like I said, you're getting two different answers. Sometimes she tells you as soon as her daughter graduates high school and when she tells you those things, that's when her attraction level is really high because that's what she's feeling. But when she tells you college, when she finishes college, which is basically five years from now, 
That means her attraction level is lower. He says, I'm sticking to my guns. I have communicated with her in a very loving manner about this. Do not get me wrong. This is not a source of constant argument or a subject with us, but it does come up about once a month. I love this woman like I have never loved another, but to be honest with you, if the move doesn't come next year, I do not know what I'm going to do. And that is the rub. And I would just say, look, I love you and I want to be with you. You keep bringing up moving in. I'm, I've told you I have no intention of moving. I can't move. I'd be giving up my little girl and I can't do that. It's not going to happen. So if you and I are going to continue to be together, then come next year, I'm expecting you to move. And if you come next year, you don't want to move in with me and you say you want to wait till your daughter finishes college, then unfortunately that's going to be the end of our relationship because I don't want to continue – doing the long distance thing I'll, I'll do it for another year but come next year unless you move in with me then we're not going to have much of a future together and you say it in a loving way but that is the truth of the matter he says i'm tired of driving back and forth and i'm tired of not being with her as much as i want to be and tell her that say so, yeah, I'm, I'm sick of the distance it, it's not fun he says, am I, am I supposed to be okay? Well, maybe you will move when she graduates high school or maybe you will move when your daughter graduates five years from now. No way, man. I don't want to wait that long. I have no problem with waiting for her daughter to get out of high school. Be congruent with that then. But I believe that if she really loves me at that time, she would be ready to go. Like you say, when we will do anything for a man if their attraction level is at 100%. Is this what I need to be focused on, getting her attraction level up to 100%? Would this be one of those situations where we're going, we're going to keep going like we are and not say anything and let her come to me so to speak or should I say, hey, this is what I would like and if you don't see it that way, we should end it. I love you and adore you and I think you're a great girl. Call me if you change your mind. Your advice would be extremely helpful right now and I'm getting to the point where when she brings it up, I do not know what to say. So this is what I would say. Next time she brings it up, I would just say, look. I'll give this another year but come next year, I'm expecting you to move in with me and if come next year, you're saying now you want to wait another four years until she graduates college, then unfortunately, that's going to be time for us to go our separate ways because I'll do the long distance thing for another year and if you're not ready to move in with me then, then it's going to be time for you and I to part ways because I just – and then if that happens, then you're going to have to walk and never look back but at least this way – you're going to let her know exactly, specifically, explicitly where you are and you're congruent. You want, you're, good, you're good waiting a year. That makes sense to you. You're cool with that but you're not cool with it beyond a year and you need to tell her that and you need to be congruent with that statement. And you know, So a year from now, you may come to the point where you have to say, say la vie. I don't want to do this anymore and walk away and never look back and she, you know, it may come to that. But if she's happy and she's head over heels in love, like I said, the thing I would do is I would start slowly backing off over the next 30 days to the point where she's doing 100% of the calling, texting, and pursuing. Because if her attraction level is a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, she'll start planning to move in with you. She'll talk more about it and she won't be giving you all this maybe crap and this vacillating back and forth between when my daughter graduates high school and or when my daughter graduates college. That's what I would do if I were you. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 